everyone, welcome to another episode of Behind the Wheel. We're at the National Motor Museum. I'm Mick, I'm one of the curators here, and this with me is a 1962 Ford Anglia. Now, the Anglia is not one of the most important cars in Australian motoring history. I'll make that clear from the start. Um, but it has taken a bit of a hold in people's minds and imaginations. It's a very well-loved car, and it's all because of the Harry Potter series of movies, and in particular, the Chamber of Secrets, where a turquoise, not mint green or mint blue, uh, Ford Anglia is one of the main protagonists, really. Uh, everyone loves the flying car. Now, the Anglia was a, uh, it was the smallest model in the Ford lineup, and it came from uh, Ford's UK production arm. Uh, in America, compact car has a bit of a different meaning. So in the 1960s and 50s, uh, there was no need for a car this size in the US. Uh, but in Europe, and eventually in Australia and South Africa, these were quite big sellers. So the first Ford Anglias were produced in 1939. They did go through several series until they ceased production in 1967. And they're related to the Ford Prefect, uh, and in the UK to the Ford Popular. Uh, now, they were a very base model, they're, they're basic motoring, uh, and that's actually one of the main reasons that they uh, appeared in the Harry Potter series. So, the story goes that J.K. Rowling, the author of the series, uh, was a teenager in high school in the UK, uh, and she had a Welsh friend called Sean, I forgot his surname, but Sean had a, an Anglia. Uh, we're talking, I think, about the early 1980s, so it was maybe a 15-year-old car at the time. Uh, in Australia, the equivalent would have been a 1980s high school kid, maybe getting granddad's old E.H. Holden, basically, um, as his first car. And for J.K. Rowling, the car symbolised freedom, as it does for many Australian teenagers. You know, your, your first experiences on the road and um, getting to know the countryside with your mates. Um, so that's what it represented for her, and then it made its way into the series where Arthur Weasley enchants the car to fly um, and uh, to be invisible. So we're going to have a look under the bonnet with Nigel, and he can show us where the invisibility booster is. Hello, Nigel. How are you? I'm good. Mick? Or should I say Harry? Which one is it today? No, no, I can only hope. You still only a muggle. Hope. Still a, still a muggle, not a Harry. So here we have the under the bonnet of the uh, 105e Anglia. So it's 997 cc's inlet and exhaust on the same side. Later on, with this particular design of engine, which became known as the Kent engine, uh, it became a crossflow. So this was very early in their um, design features of this particular engine, but. Lasted for a very long time. The Kent Evolve could go through to the Escorts and the Cortinas and sort of didn't see the end of production till about the 1980s, around about that sort of time. So very robust little engine. Uh, very basic, not an awful lot. And your invisibility booster, I think, is in the end of your wand. <laughs> and uh, so Made in England uh, is written stamped on some of these parts, but obviously these were assembled in Australia. Uh, yet yeah, some of them would have been so we're not particularly sure about this one whether it was actually built in Australia or whether it would have been assembled overseas so um, and it was specifically donated to the National Motor Museum by uh, a lady called Lynette Daly who wanted us to uh, or wanted children to be able to enjoy it uh, as a Harry Potter vehicle so um, uh, very aware that it's uh, much loved by a generation of kids probably starting from about my age I definitely remember uh, July actually we're in July now and July was the month that Harry Potter books used to get released and as a kid I'd fight with my young siblings and see who got to read it first. I was the eldest so it was normally me. Are you meaning your age now or are you meaning your age when you were younger? Still a kid at heart. Still and another important heart. feature actually with these cars, returning to the more serious bit, um, doesn't seem like much but this rear slanted window, uh, the rear window at the back, uh, that gave quite a lot of headroom um, for people. Uh, and so, you know, considering this was basically uh, one of the cheapest cars on the market, in fact, earlier models of the Anglia were the cheapest car on the market in Australia when they were released, um, you know, made it quite a good car for the family to own and no wonder Mr. Weasley decided to turn it into a flying car for the whole Weasley clan. So, do you reckon we can take it for a spin or perhaps even a flight? Well, you'll have to get your wand out and see whether you can make it go, won't you, Mick? Just but try me. It. Wingardium Leviosa. Wingardium Leviosa. Wingardium Leviosa. Nigel, it's not working. Okay, Mick. It's your turn to drive. Or fly, whichever way you think you're going to get it going. Look, we haven't been able to make her fly, but driving it is quite easy. So off we go. It's a four-speed manual. And um, I guess, you know, we've done a lot of these videos now. Sometimes you step into maybe like a 1920s or even last week we did a 1907 vehicle and it's fairly complicated to figure out what you're doing and how to get them to drive. By the time you get to 1962, which is when this car is, and this is a 
car as we know and love it. Four speed manual. Very, very, very simple everything. Um, but it runs, drives and stops very nicely, which is comforting news if you're someone who's given one to a teenager, for example, uh, in the 1980s, as with J.K. Rowling's friend, or in fact, many, many, many teens across um, the UK and also in Australia and South Africa grew up um, with this as their first car. The main competitor for the Anglia, funnily enough, was the Mini, um, which, uh, you know, one of the most popular cars in history, but um, the Anglia still held its own. It actually, um, it actually sold uh, in total, I think, one and a half million units uh, and was eventually replaced by the Ford Escort. So it didn't live as long as the Mini, um, but it still, um, it still did uh, manage to sell quite a lot uh, while competing with it. So uh, this is not obviously the original car from the Harry Potter uh, movie series. Uh, I think they actually used something like 15 of them in filming. Quite complex to shoot those scenes. Uh, but the National Motor Museum of the United Kingdom uh, does have uh, one of those vehicles uh, on display there. So if you're lucky enough, you can go see that one. Um, as I mentioned earlier, this one is not the correct colour, which is turquoise, but a lovely mint green or mint blue. Um, so yeah, we've had this in a Beta Birdwood before. We will definitely have it in a Beta Birdwood again. Um, and uh, we've also uh, displayed it quite a few times in uh, Harry Potter related events, like uh, uh, recently with the um, Adelaide Symphony Orchestra doing the Harry Potter movie series. Um, yeah, it's a fantastic uh, vehicle for the National Motor Museum and particularly for kids to enjoy. It's a very good working object, isn't it, Mark? Yeah, and that includes kids as old as me, by the way. That's right, you've just never grown up out of that kid face, have you? <laughs> Hope you've enjoyed watching. Bye for now.